This is a telescope optical tube assembly that I received today. Let's just open and see how it looks. Okay, this is well protected. Inside this GP bag is this bubble wrap. And now I'm going to take it out and test. So let me first have to use both hands. Okay, GP bag, the bubble wrap, and now the actual bag is here. So it's really well wrapped. Now the one layer of the bubble wrap is open. This is the bag, but the rest of it is also protected by the um, coarser bubble wrap. So I'm just going to remove this and see what is inside. Oh, look at that. What is this? Dew control. The Stanley Web Cross. Okay, so let's see what is it. Have to open. Let's see here. Oh, look at this. Hmm. Filter polarizing filter. Uh, crystal view moon filter. We have here something which looks like an eyepiece. Oh, it's a bar look. And this is an eyepiece. This is another eyepiece. This is a viewfinder, viewfinder bracket. There's a handle, oh lovely. It looks like 3D printed. Beautiful. Nice. And it screws for the attaching the dovetail bar to the telescope. Let's let this put this aside and I will show you the rest. Okay, this is really well wrapped, but uh, I have to open the rest of the package. Oh, dual speed Crayford focuser. What is it? Optic star. Let me turn it around. Okay, this is the Optic Star AR90S 90mm f5.5 Acromat Telescope. 1 to 10, pray for the focus. So, so, looks like a real deal. Quite chunky. Yeah, at least I think it's at least two and a half, three kilos. Let me just open the uh, cap and see how it looks, dust cap. Okay, that's the way the objective lens looks. So this is the optical star telescope. Let's see how it looks with the Vixen 25mm orthoscopic eyepiece. I can bring it more to, into more precise focus, but I'm holding the camera with both hands, so I need a third hand to actually move the focuser. Anyway, what the heck? You can see what it is. Some part of it is in focus, at least in the sharper focus. And that's the way it looks. So this is acceptable performance from a, a short tube. Telescope. I will test it on the stars tonight and the night sky on the moon and some such, such things. Um, that's a really good double speed focuser. Nice, one to ten. One turn of this turns this ten turn. You can see how fast it is. Anyway. Okay, I'm using the Optica Star Telescope 
myself really impressed the size of the lens is 90 millimeter bigger than the scroll watcher st80 or ed80 or ed72 it's a clone of the takahashi 90 rs i think anyway it's a really good telescope i'm impressed with the quality of the image uh, there was a slippage on this uh, focuser. I just added electric tape, and that works actually. And I'm looking at different parts in the sky near the Scorpion constellation. A really nice views. One of the better telescopes. And handy, nice for travel. If there was no slippage, that would have been perfect. Okay, I have now the RKA and uh, plus all 28mm, both from Edmond Scientific. This one, the field of view is around 50, something like that. This one is similar, probably, but with this, you see the, you see actually the field stop. But with this one, the eyepiece almost disappears. Big eye relief also, this one, RKE. So, hmm, really impressed. Wonderful, wonderful, Optica Star. AR19S, 90mm F, ratio 5.5, Acromat. This is a Chinese telescope. And uh, for the price, you cannot get anything better. It's 90 millimeter. It's for wild field, practically, observation of the night sky. So for planetary, it's not useful. You can see some details, but not like a planet killer, like a telescope with a high F number. But what a wonderful thing for wild field. The build quality is like a Takashi. Uh -huh. Um, optically, I don't think it's a Takahashi, but build quality is really good. Mechanically, is really good. And I'm using a, a University Optics uh, Koenig 2 32mm eyepiece. Looking at the M15, I think. The Pegasus globular cluster. Beautiful, wide, very wide angle. Using the Sky Watcher Nirvana 60mm, I can see the central part of the uh, M15, the globular cluster, brighter, halo, dimmer. Can I see any individual stars? So that's out of question. And now I'm using the Teleview Ethos uh, 8mm, 100 degrees. And the clouds and uh, this light pollution is not on my side, so I'm not seeing any individual stars, just a patch of the bright patch of the cluster looks bigger compared to the Nirvana 82 degrees film of view. Oh, hallelujah! With averted vision, and I can see some clumps of the, some knots of the stars uh, gathering, small clumps. I don't think they're individual stars, but I can see a clump of uh, several stars close together in the M15 globular cluster. So, not bad, not bad. If I, I ideal condition, probably I could see more 
also if, if I could sit. This is amazing. Tell us what. Using it, I feel that I'm using it Absonian. Really wild field telescope. I was using it on the altar sample mount. And uh, it's got watch extension column and the Celestron XLT EQ3 tripod takes everything. Uh, Sabra didn't have the counterweight shaft, so I just used the uh, bar without actually any screw and these are the sha uh, and the yeah, counterweight uh, weights for the EQ3 here fantastic telescope for under 200 pound and when the dust cap goes in so short. Yeah, fifty centimeter. And the telescope front cover is metal, also screwing. So we have to screw it in. I just see when I screw what will happen. comes exactly flat and it is tightened horizontal that's one of the qualities that the Questar they say had at the cap any position if it is original cap of the telescope if you come always horizontal in the tightest position okay tonight it was a little bit clear compared to last night which was really foggy and I was able actually to go and set up a small telescope. I didn't want to take a big heavy one. So I went and put this uh, telescope. It's the Optica Star AR90S. 90mm uh, uh, refractor. It's a short tube refractor. I use the Zeiss microscope eyepiece. It's a PL10, um, uh, I think, 20 dash 20. And this is equal to 25mm and 57 degrees field of view is comparing this with the panoptic uh, i've seen people comparing the, the view with the panoptic 24 millimeter 68 degrees really good eyepiece one sixth of the price of it so i watched the comet zf this is near the hiatus in the taurus um, close by to the aldebaran and sigma Tauri, of course, is moving. The situation is moving. I hold the camera is a Huawei P10 30 Pro mobile phone against the eyepiece, nothing else. And I was able to, able to catch it. The mount is a flex tube. Uh, uh, it's called Watcher Flex Tube 130 Dapsonian tabletop mount, white one. So my estimate of the magnitude of the comet is around magnitude seven. The online data says it's magnitude seven point one. So close enough. In good seeing conditions, you can actually see the fan-shaped tail of, of the comet easy. It was a little foggy and wet tonight, but I could see the tail clearly. I also turned the telescope towards the Great Orion Nebula of Messier 42 or M42, and I was able to capture this. I'm really happy. One of the best views I've ever had with uh, any camera, uh, a mobile phone camera, with this uh, telescope. Really nice wide field of view really everything visible 
of course a uh, very wide camera means that you will have also some distortion slide and also a little bit discoloration because this telescope is not a uh, upper chromatic and that's the reason we had some purple fringing a little bit blue light you know this is this doesn't claim that it is upper chromatic it's a chromatic it's cheap but it's very versatile and i'm really happy to have it Beside the image in the comet and the uh, M42 Great Orion Nebula, I was able actually to look at the uh, star cluster M35 in the Gemini and the NGC 2158, which is the smaller uh, cluster just to the uh, right top part of this image. You can see that, yes, to the right. Beside that, two double star. Uh, anyway, that was interesting. I could image it with this 90 millimeter. Refractor is a short tube, is very good, versatile for this kind of quick observations.